My mic's not going to work. Is it? Your mic's working. Hey guys, it is Hayley Biddles Eads here and we are back in the Obsessed Hub studio. It's been a while. Um, we've been renovating and if you look where well, you can't see at the moment, but like literally we've got new equipment, new stuff, new things. So this is our first pod, podcast back in a while and a few, about a month or so. I've invited um, a guy called Tim into the studio. We've got Corey to my left. Hello. 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 Hey, guys. Hey. So so we are wanting to talk about things kind of like a little bit because that's how we are, basically. We want to talk about controversial things. And one of those things that came up was talking about Hitler, the Nazi regime, and similarities. And through one of those conversations, Tim reached out and basically said, hey, I've got some ideas that are a little bit different and a little bit controversial. So he's not on camera today because we're just going to protect his identity because some of the thoughts and some of the things that he may say, people might get um, funny about or disagree Offended. With offended or whatever but it's so easy to be offended these days though, it really it? is and this yeah. is what obsessed hub is all about it's not about and there really is no judgment in in this no. space and i think that we can all learn a lot from each other when we um listen to other people's points of view and i think none of us are stupid enough to know that like you know like there's just all this stuff that's happened at the moment with like trump and biden there's no like there are so many people that get so religious so religious about one particular thing that they become blind to absolutely everything that's going on yeah there's a lot of like rusted on people who just, you just can't change their views like one way or another they'll always say you're wrong or they're right so it's uh, incredibly hard to sort of tread the middle line if you will mm. yeah yeah so um no you're right sorry we're just having like mic issues as we're pulling in so you've got to stay close to the mic but yeah no um and, and i appreciate you coming on because i know it's hard and i know it's kind of hard to put yourself out there because some of the things that you talk about, like you've got a bit of an obsession, don't you, with World War II? Yeah, it's, it's a really good uh, history subject. Like you can pick half of it to go into, and you'll 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 miss most of it in your lifetime. So if you you want to delve into one area, like you, you still even over a lifetime, you won't be able to cover it all off. So I think it's a great thing to sort of learn about and be interested in. You know, you know because even what eighty years later, we're still finding stuff to talk about and sort of debate. What, what kicked it off? What kicked off the obsession? I mean, because I know that, like, I mean, Corey, this is why I've got Corey in here at the moment because yeah. he is obsessed. He oh, loves yeah. it. Well, me too, yeah. But Loved I think it. he's, like, just been in, obsessed just about the war in general, really, but you've kind of just gone down that path of really wanting to know more about the Nazi party and how they rolled and some of their belief sets. Yeah, of course. Um, I think everyone's sort of start comes from your parents. So growing up, you know, I always watched a lot of uh, war films with my father or uh, I read a lot of comic books. So in the 1950s and 60s, there was a comic series called Commando, uh, which is still exists today. But uh, it was all about World War Two. So that sort of piqued my interest in when I was at a young age, being at a male, you know, you play with toy soldiers and everything like that. And it just sort of like grew and cultivated. So as you grew up, you sort of got interested in the history and started reading about it, uh, you know, and you just pick a subject area that uh, you like, you know, some people are really deep into sports or really deep into, you know, business studies or like finance. So, you know, your brain sort of just drifts towards something that you find very interesting and, you know, you, you just go from there. Yeah. Same with you, Corey, hey? So you were like pretty similar. What was, what was you? With World War Two in yeah. specific? Um, I think it was mainly um, for, for me that attracted me the most was the involvement the Anzacs had. You know, we've got Anzac Day coming up around the corner, which is, it, it's really important to me um, as a, as a Kiwi and as a, and as, as an Anzac, but um, what the role that they played and for such a, a small army that they were, they did a lot of great mm -hmm. things. And that's where I sort of piqued my interest in. And then everything else sort of followed suit, understanding what Hitler did, uh, the relationship, uh, relationship between uh, Germany and Russia, uh, and then how that fell apart. And, you know, Stalin jumped on our side and, you know, how the English were pretty much on their heels before the Americans came in. So all of that stuff was really interesting too. So, but yeah, like you said, you can go down so many different rabbit holes and not even come out the other side because they just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper. 
it's really interesting. Yeah. Well, this is, and this is why I want to have this conversation because it just peaked. Like, I've, for me, like you don't often meet people that kind of go, "Well, hang on a second. I actually think a little bit. What, what are, what, are, what is your mind? Can you like break it down for me? What your mindset is around the Nazi Party and the whole their whole involvement with the whole? Because I know it's a sen- very sensitive subject, obviously with the Holocaust mm. and because there's no denying that what happened to those people was absolutely horrendous, crazy. Mm. And there really, in my view, there really is no excuse for that to happen no, to anybody for, or any reason. But what is it? I mean, give me break it down for me. What's your mindset around this whole? Well, I, I think um, the whole the whole national socialist movement. It's just a reaction of the times. So I don't. I think if you didn't have a uh, Hitler figure, uh, there would have been something very similar. Be it in uh, Italy, you know, you had Mussolini. Uh, France had quite a huge fascist party. Hungary. Uh, Romania, Finland. So I think just it, it's a sign of the times, you know, the the, the early and late thirties. It was just this melting pot where mm-hmm. sort of a finding, sort of a scapegoat for a two decades of almost you could say almost thirty years of hardship from like nineteen fourteen, you know, all the way up to the forties to sort of blame someone. It was a very very big sign of the times. So I think that the sort of national socialist movement is is inevitable, or in some other form, you know, it might not have been. Uh, Hitler, but another figure would have taken his place. Because so, yeah, think... let's be honest, there, there was racism everywhere. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's, there um... was racism in America. They wouldn't even let black soldiers fight in yeah, World War Two. Like it... You know, they were they were cooks or they were stewards or something like that, or drivers. Most of them. Mm-hmm. Um, Australia was the same. You didn't have Aboriginals fight mm-hmm. with a lot of the Australians. Maybe there were small factions. If I'm if, correct me if I'm wrong, but it wasn't like they were were part of the Anzacs. You know what I mean? No. Um, a lot of people had to push their way in. And there was a lot of racism. And I think I get what you're kind of trying to say. So Hitler pretty much took the brunt of it all. Yeah, he? That, because that's he it, was, so. And obviously what he's done is inexcusable and, you know, what he did was horrible. But there was a lot of Can other I, people doing a lot of horrible shit at the same yeah, time. It's, it's you like got Stalin times, that was doing yeah. the same thing, the Japanese and what they did to the Chinese as well mm. when they invaded at the start. Mm. So there was a lot of that going on because of race. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know what I mean? And because culture, he's yeah. a Jew, because he's Chinese, um, Chinese, because he's Aboriginal, because he's yeah, black. yeah. But do you think, do you think Hitler was absolutely batshit? Crazy? Yeah. Uh yeah. In his in his beliefs, I think it, you know what he sets out as an end goal is unattainable. It's sort of this fanciful uh, mindset. It, it was a melting pot of ideas mm. that he sort of cobbled together into sort of his vision. Uh, it's quite interesting that he he sort of sees himself as almost just the voice of the movement for most of his early political career. It's just up and he gets locked up uh, for his failed sort of coup against the government where he realises sort of instead of being sort of a voice of uh, God, if you will, that he actually is the sort of God saviour of, you know, the, the right wing, the sort of white Aryan. Mm. It's, it's quite quick. He, his mindset kind of changed from a voice to a sort of a leader very quickly. And, you know, that's it's what you know five years of imprisonment or less you know does to you his time to sort of cultivate his thoughts but also we were talking about it off camera but like that marketing that you you put so much effort into marketing and kind of like and the i can imagine like the ego would have been yeah it's huge uh he always he always sort of bases uh sort of there's a there's an argument that he makes the point that he he thought up this this perfect design of the the black the white and yeah. um, the red, it, it being the old national colours, but he, as, as a sort of a failed painter, he always thinks of himself as sort of a genius in uh, symbolism to sort of turn it on an angle and put it inside. Well, he started at university or something. Yeah, he studied, he studied, he studied to be a, a painter and yeah. when he was in Vienna, um, it's, it's very much so that he, he can never sort of sell his art. He can never sort of make it as an artist. If you actually look back on his paintings today, they're actually, um, they're actually quite good, but because at the time um, when he was there, sort of the classical... You know, watercolor paintings had sort of dissipated, and you had this new sort of movement of art. So nobody really cared about his art movement, even though no. they're quite good. If you look up some of his art, he's actually quite talented. You find it, but um, yeah, get some, get some of that up. Well, psychos can be talented. Really, yeah, that's it. Like, and yeah, I he, get it because people like because people like we well, don't give a fuck because he killed all these people. It's yeah. just like, well, at the end of the day, like they people do have like other talents, mm-hmm. and yeah, okay, so he's not. So he's, he wasn't bad. There's there's quite a famous uh, there's quite a famous quote that um that if if uh, the Germans ever captured Winston Churchill that he'd more or less put him in a uh, sort of country estate because Winston Churchill was quite a um, regular painter and sort of just leave him there to paint as sort of respect from one artist to another. So it's quite a uh, batshit crazy idea. But as, as he sees himself as this sort of artist that creates all the imagery that goes around it. 
yeah, we've got something here. So you know, this is this is just an example of you know somebody's watercolor. So he's not he's not horrible. You know, he's not he's not doing finger painting. It's actually really good. It's not, this it's this is the thing though, right? Isn't it like isn't that the thing? Like most people that are that kind of and this is the weird. Thing. He was a genius. He yeah, certain things. Yeah, of course. Very clever. He was a very clever guy. And this is, I mean, we were talking about it again, like in using the symbols and kind of like that whole religious kind of vibe to get the attention because it was well marketed. Mm, yeah, but whole... a lot of those scientists, his scientists, like Goebbelings and all those guys, they were uh, amazing geniuses mentally, but they were just horrible, horrible people. Yeah, exactly. What they... Can I ask? Mm, I mean, yeah. I, mean I, I know you weren't there, but I know that you're really well researched, mm. which is why you're here. Mm happened do you think that he came up with it was him at the beginning of, like he was the brains or do you um so him? what happens is uh he, he he's quite lucky enough to be he, he remains in the very much downsized army after the treaty of versailles and he's made a political informant um where he goes around sits in these groups and he's he's his point is to uh, more or less report back to the government to see if any of these sort of political factions are uh, dangerous and you know he gets assigned to the DAP which is the Deutsches uh, Workers Party and the person who's actually running so the party exists before him uh, and the person who runs it is uh, Hugo Strasser who actually comes up with the original sort of nationalist idea sort of a one state one person yeah and then uh, during his tenure uh, apparently he has an outburst at one of the meetings and just says like no one will listen to you this is stupid and then sort of he realizes that people are listening to him so he more or less barges his way into that party so he just pushes his way into that party and then joins the DAP uh, and then eventually there's a falling out where he threatens to he becomes this great uh, orator so he actually becomes almost just the spokesman for the party so he actually has a falling out with the party and threatens to quit and start his own one and that's when they give him control of it and he adds the NS to the front of it so it becomes the National Socialist Workers Party. So yeah. what is it about like i mean it must have been his ability to articulate because you, you don't just get there by accident mm. it's not something and this is what people i think largely a lot of people think because he's such a polarizing character he was charismatic he was able to yeah. draw people in yeah, with his, his speech um, his or oratory you... abilities are like apparently were quite mesmerizing if you read some of the people who ever went and saw him speak they said no, it's quite hard to take your eyes off him so he was a um uh, he, he would be someone like uh how people who were very big Trump supporters were, you know, were almost mesmerized by yeah. um, him speaking. But, you know, people who are very good at, you know, oratory. Same thing with Mussolini. Uh, a lot of people said it's very hard to take, you know, your eyes off Mussolini when he was NLP. speaking. Yeah. 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 Linguistic programming techniques. And have, it's actually taught. Have and you seen that Jojo Rabbit? I have seen that film. And it's how quite interesting. in the director, the guy that played Hitler as mm. the imaginary friend, the, the, the speech he gave to the end when the boy turned and was like he loved the the, the Jewish girl mm. and, and all that kind of stuff, that was part of one of his speeches that actually performed. Oh, really? okay. well, yeah. So the the word the the word that he was saying mm. at that time was actual speech of Hitler, oh, and cool. he was saying all of that about you know worshiping him and all mm. that kind of stuff. So I found that really um, funny. And intriguing yeah, and, and, and was, sad at the same it was, time. It was a great. Um, it was a good movie. It was a good movie. I, it, it showed um, as sort of like an the ideological. How absurd it was. Yeah, the ideological like yeah. bend over people. It's quite. Yeah, yeah. It's and quite the way they the way they portray Jewish people, and that yeah, was literally the on the newspapers that have pictures of them and mm. how they'd look and the way they would look was horrible. Yeah, what they so did. Like, that was always the caricature. They did. Uh, they do a very good job. And um, that's your marketing. You're talking. Yeah, about they like do. They, they did a very good job of marketing. You know, they could yeah, they could sell yeah. you anything would probably be the yeah uh, example. You know, uh, they did a great job of scaring people, if you would, into. Um, well, they followed um, one of the best, and you can't beat it practices and mm. that's religion yeah yeah Reli exactly. religion is the best marketing marketed business in the world so well, literally they nailed it mm. they took it and nailed it sorry gone i just want to kind of i want to we've got some comments off here like so basically there's people here and um it says facebook user we don't know who they actually are but um it says that globalization dictatorship is run oh here we go it's run from usa today via china's silk road e.g covert <laughs> it keeps changing it on me you're just trying to you're just yeah. trying to keep me on my toes, Bailey. <laughs> um, E.g., COVID is uh, COVID is main, and they changed it because obviously it stops things going through. But man-made hoax pandemic to roll out Hitler fear, and this is what this is what sparked the conversation. Mm. Is like the similarities of how they because you can control with fear. Yeah, yeah, of course. Look what the Democrat Party is doing. You got to wear a mask everywhere you go mm. over in America. 
they're trying to push that rhetoric of yeah you got to obey you got to they're obey they're doing it here they're doing it here too yeah of course they're doing it here as well but over there it's you see it more every time you're on social media or anything like that you've got one of those douchebags up there with a mask on in front of you know social distancing and everything <laughs> no, but i'm serious but that's it no and, i agree with and you and they are pushing that rhetoric of you know you got to do as we say this is a bad this is you know a pandemic you got to wear a mask you got to do this you got to do that which is actually how how hitler ran his shit you've got oh, to like wear he, this you got to wear that you got to do this it was more it was it was more a, i think in hitler's case it was more something being left out um it was very popular it's very popular to wear the armband it was very popular to be a party member to fly the flag outside your house um i think covid's a bit different in response to that person's question i think covid's a bit different i think if you were in australia i can understand why you would have this sort of um sort of you're not too keen to wear a mask you're not too keen to sort of follow all this sort of guidelines that have been given to you because it's more or less been abated here we don't have a problem in the states i think it's a bit different you know it, you know six hundred thousand people have died i can see the point of sort of pushing a public health sort of standards that a mask will help you yeah. in theory but it's not going to save you but um i think for them it's more or less a case of i think it more helps people mentally and i think it's more kind of like for me from my perspective and i've got mm. and i yeah, have no, and like super is that well driving research. the numbers up like a covid death like over there you're saying six, is that the actual figure now six hundred thousand deaths it's, it's about that yeah it's about six hundred thousand deaths but she's bought zero point zero zero of course eight. and they said it initially two hundred fifty thousand was going to be a number that was going to drop mm. we're straight track. away we're off track no but what i'm saying <laughs> no, i've got a point to it though so uh, yeah. it depends on what you believe whether or not covid was the actual thing that they died of because uh, to report a COVID death, you just have to have COVID upon death to be written down as a COVID death. So the way that they would drive their rhetoric of you putting that mask on and social distance and all that kind of stuff is by doing that. Mm -hmm. There's 17 states over there at the moment writing literature saying that they don't want to have these vaccination passports. Yeah. And the Australian government, is pe po uh, politicians here that are trying to do the same thing and bring, um, they were talking to someone from Florida, I can't remember their name, but he was a senator from Florida that's put this together and is putting it to, to the Senate or whatever it is. And we're trying to do the same as well. So it, they just twist it differently. You know what I mean? The numbers, they skew over there so easy. You know what I mean? And you can believe that. So saying that, um, you know, it's a little bit different there. It's, it's not, it's, if anything, we always look at America as Australians, Kiwis, whatever it is, we look at American movies, American TV shows, American sitcoms, they lead, they well, lead no, everything. Going back to that, going back to that marketing side of things so that they're just, really great at marketing of course they, they, they learned it from hitler he was the one that started the olympics the way you see the olympics now yeah that was all hitler and this is the thing this that is, was hitler okay, so this is my point right like if we live in a cancel culture society where it's okay to kind of go oh well you know the dr zeus thing and like just taking out things because it's just so stupid the thing is if you remove this shit, we can't learn from it there's so much we can learn from hitler and as much as a monster as he was with the things that he did with the Holocaust and, and many millions of lives, lives lost, there was great, and I can't even like, I know, don't shoot me for the love of God and don't send me any messages, but there was so many great things and great, he was a great mind, but he had that responsibility and, and he really misused his power. And I think it's a bit. Well, he had a, he had a belief. You know, he had a belief that, like you were saying, he had a belief of white supremacy. He thought, what was that eugenics that we were talking about? Yeah. And that the science of uh, white people being superior to the rest of the race. And he had this idea that, you know, white people were here and every other race was was underneath. Mm -hmm. And that's him being brilliant is is great, whatever. But at the same time, the reason the way he was is he had a belief. Yeah, he, he followed his belief through the court. You can say he does. If you, if you go back and look at Western media, like for most of the 30s, most of the sort of West thought um, he was, you know, incredibly sort of smart in the way sort of he like built the country out of um, out of a, out of like a horrific uh, recession, if mm. you will. Uh, it, it, it could be a question if um, he sort of didn't go down that sort of other road um, of with having all the racial ideology and things like that. Would you know? Would have been he been looked at a lot uh, differently? You know, would you would history today look at him a lot differently? Say if he left left that whole Jewish question out, he probably yeah. would have he probably would have burnt out as a fad. Um, you know, when when he actually takes power, um, the Nazi Party was actually starting to decline uh, because things were improving and there were a party built on sort of. Uh, sort of addressing sort of issues in the country. So, you know, if, maybe if you didn't go down that line um, and just sort of led with a very sort of uh, dictator kind of style, but not with a sort of anti-Semitic or sort of hate yeah. rhetoric, it might, might have been viewed differently. It's a, it's a very, very sort of hard question to sort of answer, if you will.
Yeah, definitely. Definitely, yeah. But his his ultimate goal was to take over every bit of land he could. He wouldn't he wanted to be a conqueror like I, Alexander. I think and, I think I think um in that respect, uh, his his personal belief, he, he there's almost it's trying as hard to sort of figure out if he he has a bigger hate for sort of uh, um, Judaism or sort of communism, and sort of sort mm. of splits down the sense. Really hard to figure out sort of which one he hates more. Uh, in his writings, he always sees sort of the socialist sort of East as the the ultimate goal because you know as a country needs land to expand and sort of live well he got too big for his boots yeah he, he got very too big he was for getting his boots sh- he was getting shipped metal from russia and then decided to attack them mm, yeah. and they were still shipping metal to him yeah exactly <laughs> that that is correct well henry henry this is one of the things here as well like america was funding the nazi party from the start even henry ford was selling trucks to hitler yeah, yeah that this is a thing like um it's it's very hard uh it's very americans uh the sort of stayed out of it and sort of balanced the pros and yeah. cons. I think I think to the point where America was very smart and realised that you know England on its own was just going to sit there and sort of sort of languish. You know, it can't really do anything to help itself. No, um, I don't know. There's there's a big sort of debate in um, popular culture if if Hitler doesn't declare war on uh, the United States, if they would eventually. It's argued they probably would have down the line, but because he sort of did it in a knee jerk reaction. Um, that sort of brings America into it, but yeah, like the American, the Japanese did that. Yeah, the Japanese did that. Yeah, yeah, the Japanese. So because the Hitler he was friends with the Japanese, yeah, I he, get signed, that. he signed. They signed a like tripartite yeah. pact with it's Japan, Japanese. which is which is a very strange um, agreement, which, which doesn't doesn't make much sense. No. But um, you know, the Empire of Japan did have that same sort of dictatorial, yeah, um, sort of like race based, uh, sort of religion based sort of structure. So it was a very sort of natural alliance. But even Italy to me was a bit weird. Like I could kind of get Italy, but mm. Japan was like really far left. I was like, really, the Japan? And it's, he, he, it gets to a point where I believe uh, the Third Reich's just looking for friends uh, in the sense that in in all the rhetoric, there's sort of big hate against yeah. um, Slavic people, especially mm. uh, Romani gypsies. But then um, when Ion Antonescu kicks out King Michael, he actually allies with Romania and then signs uh, with Bulgaria as well, which are two countries which are full of um classes and people which would have been seen as undesirable but because they're friends against the common sort of enemy yeah uh, just, so it crosses a lot of lines you know it's yeah. you can say he, he had a big ideology but uh in a sense i think he did sort of let little bits back in you know that most people wouldn't understand you know he sort of took his foot off the gas on certain sort of hate elements when he needed people to uh, help against other people there's a there's a great example um with uh muslims from especially from croatia and from the former yugoslav territories actually being uh put in the ss to fight the russians so that's a very there's a very great it's a really hard photo to find but there's a photo of um everyone in sort of nazi dress actually doing uh islamic prayer wearing sort of the oh we've got to find that Aryan sort of uniform so uh, (laughs) if you look up um, muslim if you look up muslim ss members it'll come up with um a great sort of photo from the have you have you read the um happiest man on earth uh no i haven't would you read it actually i'm not sure what it is i've actually never heard of it it's it's a guy um um that basically tells his story about the ins and the going the goings on and he shares his story about the absolute confusion because he was a proud german Mm. and so when the war was happening he wasn't like he was he loved germany everything germany Mm. he really never kind of like he wasn't jewish he's jewish but like in his head when he grew up his grandma was jewish because she was like super religious Mm -hmm. his mum was sort of kind of religious and just went to church and did the stuff and all the sorry the synagogue and did the stuff and the Mm. things to kind of satisfy the grandmother so by the time it got to him he was kind of like oh you know i'm jewish and we do the things but i I just love like super patriotic about his country Mm. and so when the war started and this all started to happen and like, you know, he had to go and uh, had to go away and be a completely different person. He had mm. to go away and go to university under a completely different name because the Nazi regime had started to filter sort of crack down. Yeah. Yeah. Filter through. So he talks about it, how it was just so shit for mm. him. Like he, he, you know, he'd go to Belgium and he had to be, it wasn't good enough that he was German. He had to be Jewish, but then in Germany, he had to be German, not Jewish. Mm. And it, it, it just, that whole kind of like I just didn't he lost know his identity yeah, yeah completely yeah, so uh, and he talks about and which i like the book i smashed through in about three hours and 26 minutes and it was about <laughs> three hours and 26 <laughs> minutes and 52 seconds and 52 seconds but it was such a good read because he explained and he came from from it with such compassion um 
yeah, it was horrendous what happened. He lost like his entire family. He was there like going through the truck. He was like, you go left, you go right. But mm. because he was educated, he was useful. And so that's basically how he survived. And he talks about SS soldiers and a lot of them, not a lot of them, but quite a few of them were just afraid, like so scared for their lives that they didn't know that they wouldn't go against him, but they wanted to help him. You know what I mean? And these are people that he grew up with, you know, played soccer and in his head and he still doesn't have that answer to this day. Mm. He had no clue, has no answer as to why these people that he grew up with, everything was fine. Then all of a sudden hated, hated, hated the mm. fact that he was Jewish and wanted every, wanted all the Jews dead. Mm. And, and I, and I asked the same question and like, it comes down to, I think with what you were talking about before, and coming back to those neuro linguistic programming practices, which is what mm. you know today's word is for what um, Hitler used. Yeah, propaganda, if you will. It's a very strong uh, point of propaganda. Yeah, and 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 this is why I wanted to talk about it. And I know that you said that you kind of don't really have any kind of like now and then similarities, mm. but I actually see so many, especially from a branding and marketing perspective. Because, and this is why the media is so powerful in this entire thing, because media is responsible for actually carrying those messages forward. We pay it, we pay advertising, mm. you know, we do PR, we do all these things and we pay people for copywriting and powerful images. I mean, we've got a branding agency and we've got it over there that creates imagery mm. that's specifically designed to evoke an emotion that's or it. get people to think and feel things right. Um, I don't think I don't think there's any um, direct comparisons. I think it'd be very hard to draw a direct comparison. Um, uh, a comparison that isn't, you know, I like. I'm very against this statement when people say um, Donald Trump is a sort of new era Adolf Hitler. I think that's. I think that's. that's I think it's ridiculous. complete. Opposite. I think. That's I think it's. So I think silly. it's wrong. I think. Um, I think what he is, he's just an ultra nationalist who has a very strong understanding of how um, to motiv to motivate and sort of appeal to uh, sort of like middle, the sort of like middle eroded well, the sort majority. of like middle and lower class. Yeah. Well, the majority yeah. is white. Yeah, like so the, the white, can, the white farmer, yeah. the white factory worker yeah, has lost it. his job. Yeah. Um, if you want something that is a, a close to direct comparison, uh, the Golden Dawn uh, in Greece, uh, the political party which gained a lot of support in like when you had the migration crisis. Uh, they did a very, they did very similar thing. They had a very like evoking symbol, which was a sort of Greek, um, a Greek sort of, I think it is a G or in the a Greek character on a black flag. Uh, they did sort of torch like rallies, uh, gained heaps of support, uh, support, sorry, just from, you know, just having a huge following sort of come out of the woodwork of more or less middle-class people had lost their jobs didn't yeah. have any money during the Euro crisis. But this is the thing, as soon as times get better, that base sort of whittles away and disappears because there's no need to go out there and be people sort of lighting things on fire, burning things in the streets no. when things are going well. Yeah. So to say there's a direct comparison today or when people compare um, uh, Hitler to Putin, I still think that's not not a good sort of um, I agree. No representation, you know. Well, Putin's communism. So. Uh, he's, I'd, I'd say he's more an ultra-nationalist than a socialist. You know, he's, his dream is to sort of restore uh, the Soviet Union, but I think he understands that sort of the Soviet economics of the state running everything, uh, mm. like, it just doesn't work. That's why, you know. And you know what? This is, I, I could sit here for hours, but like. We've got that picture the, up. Hold too. on. The best, yeah, in a minute, but one of the best things, like the discussion that we're having right now, mm. not a lot of people know, and this is when you vote, right, whether mm. you're in freaking Russia, America, Australia, I mean, for you, when you vote, you know exactly who you're voting for, yeah, exactly. what you're voting for, because you understand the policy you're taking, the because you're interested in it, right? Mm. Most people are blindly voting. And mm. this is the worst thing on the planet because they are subjected to the NLP messaging or the branding or really clever, well-sculpted, purposeful mm. messaging to get people to do certain things. You know, they're going, I don't even know why I did that. Well, yeah, you did it because... Yeah, I think the parties with the best in these days is not the best policies. It's more or less just the best marketing. Um, yeah. I think um, I think an example of uh, but I know who you're voting for. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. you saw that, and people try very hard to like evoke. You know, not even political uh, sort of interests when people are voting. A good example is when um, Hillary Clinton ran. She actually flooded her promotions with people like Hillary Duff, um, Katy Perry, just to get oh, all the yeah. young people in, yeah. and it, and it backfired because it it, it had a huge amount of people. Uh, associate with that because they saw sort of these um, popular figures, but a huge amount of people sort of 
uh, go against it because they realized that like, they had nothing to do with the message. They're just someone to sort of fill fill the hole. Biden did that though this time yeah, as well. Yeah, Joe did the same thing. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. it's very hard. You know, Trump sort of ran as himself just because he is um, he's sort of this figure that can sort of drum up the support. Well, he's authentic, and he's a, you like, know what you're going to get with, yeah, with Trump. And he has the ability to sort of, sort of raise sort of the roof, if you will. And you know, Biden doesn't. You know, it's yeah. just he's he, Biden is a very classical politician. He's like an '80s style American sort of yeah. um, politician. While Trump is, he's I wouldn't even call him a politician. He was this sort of. He was just this marketing genius, more so than a politician. He just knew how to sell uh, himself just and the, yeah, and and sort Trump? of well, been absolute doing it for a long genius time. in selling. That's, that's yeah, his he's, whole jam. That's he's, what he's good at. You know, he he's good at this is the thing. He's good at selling things, but as yes. as as a businessman, he's uh, quite terrible. Um, you know, every business that he's had is like failing. But but he a lot sold of the idea. Yeah, he sold yeah. the idea of it succeeding, which is more or less more important than making dollars. In, well, the in way he he's done real estate was genius. Yeah, you know it's stuff that they use today you know mm. people the way how does it work he he would get a loan but he wouldn't pay the loan until the building was sold but he would have mm. the ability to gain the building fill it up with people yeah. and then sell it off that's mm. exactly and, what you were saying like you yeah. sell you sold the success the dream yeah, yeah of you course sell success, you don't sell the like process you know because no no one no. no one really cares about how you get from a to b, a to b. It's, it's when you no. get there and that's why now that. when you kind of like you put up a business idea you, they want you to have a business plan so that's otherwise it, yeah. it's just an idea and selling the dream so that's yeah. it but um yeah i want to put up that picture go back to the the muslim um muslims and this is um i can't remember where this is from but i think that's the grand um i think he's a grand ayatollah or something if i can you know i can't really remember the name but yeah it's a very strange thing because you, you actually ended up we didn't have these sort of racially superior people you actually just had people who hated sort of socialists and you hated uh jews there's there's a very sort of thin um argument uh especially uh, that sort of the Aryan sort of people came from that uh, Syria sort of Middle East area, and then they sort of migrated into Europe. So yeah, that's really, of, yeah. So that's the the Aryan idea is um, if you ever read about it, it's it's almost um, sort well, of lunacy. Well, when you look at this image, right? It, what do you see? Like it, like to f take out what we're talking about. Mm. When I look at an image like that, I just go absolute ultimate compliance. Yeah, that's it. It's religion, just, religion, yeah. religion does foster ultimate compliance. It does, you know. And this is what I see, and this is the commonality that I mm. see between then and now. Like, you know, you walk around the streets, people wearing masks, and it doesn't matter what you think mm. about. Like, mm. for me, I kind of go, well, when you are able to collectively gather people and to do one thing. influence mm. a group on mass of that amount to do anything, not just that. Because we all know putting a mask on, who the hell is it hurting? Yeah, really? It doesn't, yeah. No one. But what I think this is what people are shouting out about is it actually, it's the ideal. That this That's the is idea where they behind make, it. Yeah. Well, this is where they make the similarity of when you kind of, if you can get that many people to do that, mm. what else can you get them to do out of fear? Mm. That's right. I, I think it works better in struggling countries, you know, it, I'd argue that the US after Obama um, was sort of struggling, if you will, like that was a sort of struggling period. It works well in uh, sort of Middle Eastern countries that are struggling. It's very easy to get compliance. Usually, you know, if one um, if uh, one group, you know, has an idea, everyone will go along with it because it seems to work. Uh, more well-off countries, I think it's a bit of a struggle because sort of uh, you always have people push back. Yeah, of course, because you got other people with Yeah, other people opinions. with ideas. Yeah. You know, if, but this, if, but this, is, this is my part mm. at the moment. Y you can't push back. Because you, I, what's at the happened, moment, it's it's hard. Well, it's hard because they've got hold of whoever it is, the powers that be, have got hold of, and this is the worst part because back when it was just television and radio, mm. it's no longer television and radio. Every no. single person has a has a phone in their hand. It's it's the greatest thing, and it, it's it follows it's, you home. It follows you into like every part of your life. Instead, of, it listens to, to you. Yeah, it used to be able to tune out very easily. Like if you didn't mm. see it on the TV, it wouldn't yeah. bother you. But now it's um, everywhere. Yeah, like suggestive marketing just. And you know what? Do you know if you brain. don't, I can't what's happening right now. Like, I mean, I started this podcast out with mm. COIV. Like, it's just mm. ridiculous because you say anything, you can't have an opinion. Mm. And if it doesn't line up with, oh, it's dangerous, it's like, well, whether it's dangerous or not, you have to allow people to have conversations and you have to allow people to have opinions mm. that are different because that is actually the whole premises, premise for me of science, scientific discovery. And science is based on other people going, well, hang on a second, this is what, the way that mm. one thing works. Well, this so, is another way. Yeah, a bunch Actually, of theories. Einstein's been proven wrong more than once. 
Yeah, of, of course he has. Right. So uh, his, his ideas were relative at the time, but then somebody's literally just gone 20 years later, well, we Hang know on. a lot more now. So yeah. This, yeah, yeah. And this is the thing, right? And, and this is what's being pushed now. I'll follow the science. I trust this guy because it's like, well, mm-hmm. actually, no, that's not the way things work. We should be able to push thing, push back. And that's why I was so interested to talk to you about the whole mm. Hitler thing because sometimes you get crammed full of so much shit in our history books that we all know can be changed and are being changed because we're watching and experiencing it right now. Mm. Literally our cancel culture, taking things out, um, changing the education, making sure that our children, I people, think, whatever, are only receiving certain information. I think it can be... I think dangerous. removing things from history or removing things from younger people's sort of purview is incredibly dangerous because if you yeah. just try and take it away and try and create this sort of like padded walls approach to life... Yeah. Um, and everything's going to be all right. It's sort of the idea that you get spoon fed now. Well, you get oversensitive yeah, people. Yeah, don't you? and like, this is this is the problem. You have a, you have a lot of oversensitive people that have come out of uh, cancel culture. Yeah. I've got a question here. It says, why why did Hitler attack Russia in the winter? I uh, sort of answer the question. He actually attacks during the sort of middle of the year and sort of autumn. So it was it was meant to be a lot. Uh, sort of earlier, but Mussolini sort of fails in Greece and the Germans have to come to his rescue. It's sort of the, the, the Greeks actually beat the Italians, which is quite um, quite embarrassing. Um, but more or less they, they attack in the middle of autumn and there was a premise that more or less if you kill enough Russians, that sort of the, the structure itself, because the Russian structure was very flimsy mm. uh, at the time, would sort of collapse within like two to four months and that doesn't occur. They get... Um, these sort of great sort of uh, images and in every sort of um, textbook is when it, the um, sort of snow starts to come and starts to freeze. Um, the Germans are at the end of their Moscow tram line. So if they're, they're, they're 10 kilometres, 20 kilometres from the city centre. So it's the the idea is that it he almost did it. That's the thing. Just did, did winter beat him? Probably not. Like at the time, you know, they'd gone something like 600 kilometres from the start. So, But the Russians know, were burning... Yeah, they're burning people um, and people and, and everything for food time. and stuff like that. So when they would retreat, the Germans had nothing. To, yeah, come to nothing. They couldn't hunt for animal. They couldn't do anything. No, like the you'd Russians see, killed yeah, everything. Yeah, and they were at the. Oh, that's 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 a bit. That's that's Nick. That's the following year. So that's uh, that's the year the year later. But uh, this is the thing. Like uh, they're at the very end of their supply line. Mm. Um, so uh, I think where they sort of fail is that they don't have the energy to go any further and the Russians don't have the energy to go push them back. That's and sort th- of why This is collapsing. the thing, like, so back then, again, because mm. I'm always going to bring it back to the premise of why I want to have this discussion is mm. then and now, because you, you did say, I really don't feel like there is any kind of, but for mm. me, every, like, the more you talk, the more I go mm. then and now. Like back then it was blood, guts and gore. Yeah. Right physical like killing people and what people i in my opinion don't see right now the war is an online war and it's the gathering of people in one sense or another and kind of the shuffling of or um the amalgamation of certain groups you know that's what i'm seeing and it it may not and you talk about this all the time we have this conversation don't we all the time where you Mm. say oh we're going to head we're heading for a, a war i'm like yeah but not like you think it's not going to be physical bombing blowing up. I mean, at the moment, in my view, we're in the middle of chemical warfare. I think eventually we will. Not chemical, I biological. Think, I sorry. think um, uh, the wars of tomorrow are going to be economic wars. They're going to be fought over computers. They're going to be fought with finances. Um, well, you have a lot of heading. yeah. You have a lot of uh, the the other thing you just raise is you know a lot of things do happen behind the shadows. You have a lot of a lot of online support, gathering support, sort of the. The ideas being passed around is now very important. I think I think your, your future wars will just be uh, a replica of sort of what happens in Crimea uh, or in, in, in Ukraine, which is a good example where you have a very uh, a like sort of flashpoint on the map. You don't have a huge world war, but it'll be a small country uh, with sort of the two larger sort of powers just mm. vying on either side. So it'll just be it's, it's small, small skirmishes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So it's, it goes back to sort of like the Cold War. So nobody wants to like uh, or nobody wants to admit that. Um, you know, they're fighting against each other and they just use little other countries to sort of uh, wage it out. And so it'll be a very sort of interesting future of conflict. China and Taiwan. China and Taiwan is a great example or the, or the sort of disputed um, disputed islands in the South China Sea, you know, mm. that it, that's a war between China, like the Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam, it's China versus sort of everything. What are your thoughts on this whole China thing, getting involved in the, what are your thoughts on that in the, in the U.S.? political the the sort of hacking if you will you're talking about that um i don't think 
just just to digress. Just I uh, like not? I don't but believe yeah. uh, it's like the if there was collusion, I think it, it was between Russia and the United States. But I don't think this is the thing. I don't think it was anywhere big enough to sort of influence um, sort of the outcome. Like what you have, uh, you had what was it the two terms of Obama where you had a very uh, unhappy. Uh, section of the country who then wanted a sort of big change away from like big government so that's why you have the huge swing towards Trump you know Trump yeah. doesn't Trump doesn't just stumble over the line everyone everyone still thinks um everyone still thinks that he only just wins no. if you will but no he, he wins by actually quite a big margin in the electoral college so it was a big you know it was a it was a protest but it was because people wanted to protest against you know two terms of sort of sluggish bad sort of leadership leadership you will oh what a question terrible guys david <clears throat> ford just tuned in the relevant question re hitler and nazis is whether they were politically left wing or they were right wing the media and educational institutions say they are right wing fascists i would argue this is a lie and i have proof david i don't know david should be on this podcast too yeah, we need to bring him on <laughs> maybe we need to have a part two yeah i think maybe so we do. i think we um, should what do you think I think um, the only thing sort of socialist in the National Socialist is the name. Um, uh, in terms, you know, they don't have, they don't follow any sort of the left sort of ideology, if you will. They, they, um, there's no sort of like collectivized business. So like big, big business um, sort of runs in Germany all the way throughout the war. So people, they, there's huge profits made by sort of independent companies. There's no uh, sort of workers' unions. Unions are banned. Sort of everything sort of left wing is sort of removed and replaced with this sort of middle ground sort of right wing. Yeah, the the idea of um sort of like family and community becomes a big thing, but that's that's more a nationalist sort of ideology. So I I I don't believe they're politically left wing. They're very sort of right wing, free market. Um, so, so you you are saying that you think the Nazis are right wing? Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's yeah, that's 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 essentially it. Yeah, I think it'd be very hard to say they're left wing because that's sort of what they run against. Yeah. Well, he's saying that he's saying it's a lie and he's got proof. You know, David, I'm going to invite you <laughs> on to the, I'm not even joking. David, you need to come on to the show. So we want you here. Ask your guest about Giovanni Gentile and whether he has heard of that. Um, I haven't heard of that fella. He might have been, um, he might be, if he's referring to, there's a like socialist uprising in Bavaria before the Nazis, but I can't remember if that is Giovanni. I think that's Gentile. Um, so no, I haven't, I haven't heard of that fella. I, well, you're gonna have to I'd love, I'd love to hear the proof. I'd be very interested to hear the the argument. <laughs> yeah, hundred mm. percent. I've been, two. I've been waiting to hear his argument about COVID for the longest time. <laughs> he hasn't come on, David. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, uh, David, David. Yeah, no, David oh, Ford. Oh, there, there you go. All right, so I'm gonna wrap it up because thank you. It's been so good. No, it's I've been actually, very enjoyable. Really cool. I actually really enjoy it. So, and and I have a. I'm sitting here half the time, just sitting here going, I don't know. You guys just go. But um, I'm grateful because it does take courage to come out and, like, have a different spin on certain mm. things. And even just, like, talking about it and having an opinion about it, I think that's basically the way, the way that society has made it. Mm. Like, you have to have one specific thought pattern. You're either about, one or the other. Yeah, you're either mm. one or the other. Yeah. And I actually don't believe in that at all. You know I don't. No. Yeah. Talking I, about the subject is great. I think I think yeah. not being able to talk about any subject is uh, yeah. very dangerous. Uh, it's a very dangerous practice. So I think being able to speak uh, about anything in sort of like a discussion sort of circle is is you know that's essentially what you're doing is what any historian does or what any sort of uh, sort of smart intellectuals do. You know. Yeah. They, they sit around the, and have the, a discussion. The, the ability to sort of hear each other's points without yeah. sort of jumping down each other's. Well, I actually, I actually don't think that uh, point of views are that different. Like you obviously don't agree with what Hitler did, no. But at the same time, you're still s not s so much celebrating. But things happened. Yeah, it's, and, it's, you and, can have an interest in someone. Yeah, of without course. sort of celebrating is quite. And like you said, we need to know the past mm. to allow us to look to better futures. Yeah, exactly. If we don't know that and don't understand it, and if we model coddling, what, what's that word? You buffer them. Yeah. You, you put tin um, bubble, bubble wrap, wrap around kids mm -hmm. or whatever it is or people themselves and don't give them fr the information that is there mm. they can't make their own decision on no, who they right. are yeah. what they want to be of course no i get you man i i, I agree i agree in a, in a lot of ways i want you to come back on oh, i'll have another we're gonna, chat we're gonna bring david wait wait we've got here we've got youtube clips and all sorts of stuff well, actually, like David, I'm not even joking. This is your opportunity to come on to the show, and we're going to get um, Tim to come back. 
and make sure that we can have this conversation again because I've actually really enjoyed it. Mm. And I'd be keen to see this proof. I'd be very interested to see this proof. Yeah, I know, which is why it's <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so good. And that's the thing. Like you've got to be able to have good quality conversations. Mm. Everybody, like we can all have different opinions, but like it's not we're not denying that what he did was Yeah, well. We'll be honest, he's not sitting there going to burn all the Jews. He's just, <laughs> just saying <laughs> yes. things that actually happen, factual things That's that it, happen. Happen, I think appreciating. Too. But I think more so it's about the time and history. And like you're saying, the and World context War II, is very important. Context is massive. Like World War II was a massive event and it mm-hmm. went for a long ass time. You know what I mean? And there was a lot of countries and a lot of people involved. Can I can I say that another now and then thing is that people take and they and back then would have happened the same too. People capitalizing on yeah, them. people capitalize on it exactly. Yeah, like um, uh, I just so we don't talk much longer. But you know, uh, oh, the Bosch, the company that makes yeah uh, dishwashers and things like that today, actually made you know like electrical conduits. You know, f- yeah, for airplanes. Uh, you know, uh, Opal made trucks for them. Uh, Ford makes planes. Boeing makes planes. So everyone, it's 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 incredibly easy to make a dollar out of a conflict and well, industrial military and, complex. Yeah, that's massive. it. Um, you know, that's, you know, that's Pfizer. Uh, Pfizer, you know, that's it. Making money out of it. AstraZeneca. <laughs> that's totally it. Like, it, it's, it's very easy. A crisis is the best place to make money because if you can give a solution that you can purchase, yeah. uh, it's just, yeah. It's, and, and on that point, can I just say thank you so much for joining us because actually that is the point that I was trying to get to and I think that um, it's not always about being right and wrong. Mm. It's about, again, having those discussions and actually going, you know what? There's possibilities in absolutely everything. So, and I'm always open to everybody's ideas and opinions. So, I want to say a huge thank you for joining us today, Tim. And for, That's right. No, I very enjoyable. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And Corey, Thanks, Tim. That's I'll right, see you awesome, at home man. when I get home. If you guys can <laughs> well, go and follow you. us, please, <laughs> on our YouTube channel, please like and subscribe because we want to grow. Um, and if you like what we're talking about, then we're going to be doing more of this stuff. So, please go and follow us. We've got Instagram, we've got Facebook, all the stuff and the things. Please go and follow us, and we'll see you next time.